This is day two, starting on page seven. In this function P of N, it gives the profit a company's earning in millions of dollars per day. And it's inputting N, which is the thousands of employees working on that day nationwide. And it tells us that they are only capable of employing up to 13,000 employees on a given day. So it first asks us to identify the practical real world domain. So the set of all input values. Now they said they want to do this in practical real world terms. So input values that make sense to consider in this context. So first I'm just going to label here. N is the input. Um, N represents the thousands of employees working. So I then ask myself, what is the smallest value of N that makes sense in this context? It would make sense to only consider a low of zero, zero employees working. It couldn't go any lower than that. And then it tells us that they're only capable of employing up to 13,000 in any given day. So that means N, the highest it can be is 13. N equals 13 represents 13,000 employees. So this graph has already been given to span that distance from 0 to 13. The domain that makes sense in this problem is 0 less than or equal to N less than or equal to 13. Or if you write it in interval notation, you would do 0 up to 13 with brackets. In real world terms, that means zero employees up to 13,000 employees. Part B just asks us to take the graph that's been given and label it. We've already labeled the input axis. I've gone from zero employees up to 13,000 employees. N represents thousands of employees. Each of these ticks would be one unit. So representing 1,000 employees, 2,000 employees, 3,000 employees, and so forth. The output axis is P of N. It's the profit that they earn in millions. Now to see how high and low that this graph is showing, you can pop this function P of N into um, a graphing calculator, or you could put it into Excel, and we could see how high the function gets up here at the end point when n is equal to 13. And if we do that, you're going to see that it's showing up to about 250 up here. And the graph that I've created is going down to a low of negative 50. So my particular graph is doing tick marks of 50, 50, 100, 150, 200. All right, so that's a pretty well-labeled graph. We can kind of get a sense of what's going on. Part C, estimate the local max point. So the local max, the point that is the highest in its little local region is right here. And it's just asking us to estimate it. We're going to be able to find it exactly using calculus um, pretty soon. But right now we're just estimating. It looks like on this graph it's about over 4 up, I'm going to say about 170. And that would mean when 4,000 employees are working, they make a profit of about $170 million. And that's the highest they can get in that little local region of employees. You see that over here, it actually gets higher than that, higher profit. But in this local region of employees working, that is the highest. Part D asks us to estimate the inflection point. All right, inflection point, it's approximately here. Remember, inflection point is a point where the graph changes concavity. You see that this graph is concave down, and then it changes to concave up. And the point where it changes is approximately right here. Again, this is just an estimate. It looks like mine is around 7 as the input, and I'm going to guesstimate about 130 as the output. So this point tells us that when 7,000 employees are working, they make a profit of $130 million. But the fact that it is the inflection point is also important. 
notice at this time when they have 7,000 employees working, profit is actually decreasing, meaning if they increase the employees to about 7,001 employees or 7,000 increase it to 8,000 employees, their profit actually goes down. Now the inflection point in particular is the point where it is decreasing fastest. You notice this entire span from 4,000 employees up to about 9,000 employees, profits are decreasing. However, it's worse, the very worst it can possibly be right here at that inflection point. It is decreasing faster, 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 right up to the inflection point. Then it begins to decrease at a lesser and, and lesser pace, right up until that minimum point. So the inflection point is when it's decreasing fastest. Part E, it asks to identify the interval where the function is increasing concave down and interpret. So looking at the graph again, the graph is increasing concave down, let me just highlight that in red, here from n is zero up to that maximum point. The graph's going up, so it's increasing, but it's concave down like an upside down bowl. Increasing concave down from zero employees up to 4,000 employees. So now we want to interpret that. It's telling us that as they change from zero employees up to 4,000 employees, profits increase. However, they increase at a slower and slower rate. Again, let's just make sure we're really clear on what that means. So for example, on this function, if this company changes from employing zero people to employing 1,000 people, okay, so here to here, their profits make a dramatic increase from employing zero people to employing 1,000 people. Look how much profits increased. But up here, going from 3,000 people to employing 4,000 people, profits only increase a little bit. So they're still increasing, but only at a slow rate. So as they increase from zero employees to 4,000 employees, profits increase at a slower and slower rate.